Hello, and welcome to a CISSP micromodule on asymmetric cryptography. Asymmetric cryptography is the encryption of information using a pair of keys. The keys are referred to as a public key and a private key. Each user has a pair, that is, each user has both a public key and a private key. The keys are mathematically related in a way that you can't figure out one from the other. Also, you must have one to decrypt something encrypted by the other. To illustrate and understand this concept, you may want to think of the public key as a lock or a lockbox, an auto lockbox. The lockbox would be the public key. Think of it as an open box that locks automatically when something is encrypted with it. Once the data is encrypted, only the private key can decrypt it, or only the private key can open the box. Anyone can have the public key, meaning that the public key is publicly available and it will not jeopardize the confidentiality of the data. The private key is used to decrypt information that was encrypted with the public key, that is, the key that opens the lockbox. Nobody should have or be able to guess this key. So again, the key pair are mathematically related so that the public and private must be used at opposite ends of the transmission. Thinking of this with the auto lockbox example, only a private key can decrypt a message that is encrypted with its corresponding public key. And only a public key can decrypt a message that is encrypted with its corresponding private key. Asymmetric cryptography provides the following services. Confidentiality. Authenticity. So remember the example used for symmetric key cryptography where confidentiality of Alice's recipe was achieved using the same key or symmetric key cryptography. Let's use the same scenario to show how confidentiality can be achieved using asymmetric cryptography. Alice has a recipe that she wants to send to Bob. She uses a public key. Again, okay, think of this as an auto lock box where anything you put in will be closed and locked. So this creates the ciphertext that Bob can only decrypt with a corresponding private key. This means that the public key needs to be Bob's and the private key also needs to be his. So the public key and the private key need to belong to the recipient to achieve confidentiality. ISC squared refers to TLS and SSL as hybrid cryptography, which is a combination of asymmetric and symmetric cryptography. To understand how it works, let's use the following illustration. Alice wants to log into her bank. Her bank is on the right there, using HTTPS. So her browser sends a request saying she wants to log in. She sends this request to the website. The website sends her browser its public key. So remember, this is a publicly available key. Anyone can have it. Because once they put something in there, or once they encrypt something, the only thing that can encrypt it is the private key. So the bank sends Alice their public key. Alice, then, her browser, I should say, creates a random symmetric key. This is also called a session key or a secret key. She encrypts the new symmetric key with the bank's public key, or she puts it in the auto lockbox. And she sends it to the bank. The bank then decrypts the contents of the box, or they decrypt the random symmetric key generated by 
Alice's browser. So they have the new symmetric key. Nobody else does but Alice and the bank. The bank then sends the message using the new key for Alice to go ahead and log in. There's the new key. There's the ciphertext that nobody can decipher. And they send that to Alice who has the same symmetric key and she can now read that message. So a secure communication is established using both symmetric and asymmetric cryptography. Authenticity is achieved with asymmetric cryptography in a much simpler fashion. Authenticity is also referred to as proof of origin. This is achieved when the source sends a message using their private key. The message is authentic because only the public can decrypt it. Here's an illustration using the same scenario, kind of as a question. So, if Alice wants to put her recipe, if Alice wants to publish her recipe and prove to the world that it came from her, which key should she use? The answer is, she needs to use her private key. And why is that? Because that way, the public can decrypt her message using her public key, which can be given freely away to the world. Now remember, let's go back here. This concept of a lockbox is just for teaching purposes. This is actually a number. It's a random, it's a, it's a value. Same with this key over here. So to calculate the number of keys needed for an asymmetric system, all you do is you multiply the number of users times two. It's important to know the difference between symmetric and asymmetric formulae. We hope this video has been helpful. If there are any questions, comments, or corrections, please leave them in the boxes below. Thank you and have a great day.